The brown dirt cowboy was open for business, but there wouldn't be much until later in the day. At the moment, there were only two customers, and one of them was passed out face down at one of the tables, snoring blissfully with his cheek in a little puddle of spilled beer. The other customer was Haystack Gunderson, who stood at the bar talking to the buxom soiled dove called Cindy. No, damn it, I don't want to go upstairs, Haystack. It's too early. Hell, I've only had one cup of coffee. I'm barely awake. I should still be asleep at this unholy hour. I'm only down here because Claude likes to have at least one girl around all the time. But that's why you're here. To work, yeah? No. I'm here so any fellas who come in looking for a little hair of the dog will have something pretty to look at. Now you go on and get out of here. Claude said you and your brother weren't allowed in here for a week after all the hell you raised yesterday, and if he wasn't asleep, you never would have made it through the door. Get! I will not. Not until I have spent time with the girl I love. <gasps> in Borg. Then I saw you been gone. I know where you sneaked off to. You been go behind my back with Cindy, yeah? Mm. Cindy is my girl. That's not what she told me last time I was with her. Not again! Haystack lowered his head and charged like a mad bull. The big brothers crashed together with such force the floor practically shook. Haystack had built up enough steam to drive Arno backward through the back wings. As they grappled, they stumbled across the boardwalk and then fell into the street. They rolled over a couple of times and then they surged to their feet again. Dust covered giants wailed away at each other with their ham like fists. Caught up in the heat of battle, the two men paid no attention to their surroundings. Arno sent a straight right to his brother's jaw. It landed with such power, Haystack was thrown back against a team of four horses that were hitched to a wagon parked at the edge of the street. The collision spooked the animals. One of the leaders lunged against its harness. The other horses followed suit. As the wagon jerked forward, its front corner flipped Haystack and spun him off his feet. He barely avoided being run over by the wheels as the team stampeded down the street toward the train station. Directly in their path, a woman was crossing the street with two small children, a boy and a girl, each youngster with a hand in one of the woman's hands. She broke into a run, tugging the children with her. One hand slipped, though, leaving the little girl crying and frozen in the path of the stampeding horses and the bouncing, rattling wagon. Denny looked toward the center of the street, and she saw the little girl standing there while the child's mother hesitated, unsure what to do. Denny didn't wait. Instinct took over. The high-button shoes she wore under a traveling outfit weren't really made for running, but that didn't stop her from lifting her skirt and dashing out into the street. She thought she could grab the little girl and get her out of the way of the runaway team. But she was only halfway there when somebody tackled her. Denny went down hard in the dirt. The impact knocked the breath out of her and left her stunned. All she could do was lift her head and watch as the man who had knocked her down scrambled back to his feet and practically flung himself toward the child. He reached out, plucked the girl from the ground, and pulled her against him as he hit on his shoulder and rolled. The slashing iron-shod hooves missed him by inches, and the team was still stampeding. Although breathless, Denny forced herself to her feet and took a couple of quick steps as the wagon rocketed past her. She leaped and caught hold of the tailgate. Denny thought she heard someone shouting at her, but she couldn't worry about that right now. She concentrated on pulling herself up, and she finally managed to hook a foot over the tailgate. That allowed her to lever herself up and over into the wagon bed. 
She climbed over the back of the seat, grabbed the reins where they had looped around part of the wagon's frame, and hauled back on the lines as she braced her feet against the floorboards. Whoa! Whoa! There, you crazy garbage! The team slowed. What would they have thought back in England if they could see her now? That made a tight smile curve her lips as she sawed on the reins and the spook team finally came to a halt. Denny! Denny turned on the seat and looked back along the street. Her mother, father, and brother were hurrying toward her. Farther up the street, Sheriff Carson was haranguing the two big, sheepish-looking men who had stampeded the wagon team. A few yards from them, a man in a buckskin shirt handed the sobbing little girl to her equally distraught mother while the little boy clung to the woman's skirts. Uh, Oh, Denise Nicole! What in the world were you thinking? That someone had to get that little girl out of the way of those horses before they trampled her, of course. Your father could have... Denny reacted faster than I did. In fact, that was pretty fast for anybody. Denny jumped down from the wagon. Yes, and I would have gotten there in time if somebody hadn't interfered with me. She stalked past her parents and headed for the man who had tackled her. Denise! You better let her go, Mother. She's got blood in her eye, and when she looks like that, there's no stopping her. The man who'd knocked Danny down had just bent over and picked up his hat from the street. As he started to swat it against his leg to try to get some of the dust off it, Denny grabbed his shoulder and jerked him around. Hey! What the hell did you think you were doing? Now, Bryce's first instinct when he was grabbed like that was to reach for his gun. But he controlled the impulse and was glad he did when he saw who was confronting him. He really didn't want to throw down on anybody as pretty as this young woman. Her hat had fallen off and her hair had come loose, and her neat traveling outfit was now rumpled and covered with dust from the street. But her bluish-green eyes flashed with angry fire as her intriguingly curved bosom rose and fell quickly. You were about to get yourself killed, miss. I figured I'd better stop you. I was trying to save that little girl. I figured I could do both of those things, and I did. You were that sure of yourself, even though a child's life was at stake? I reckon. Then you're an idiot. I was closer. I was faster. Fast enough to stop this. Her right hand suddenly streaked toward his face as she tried to slap him. Bryce's left hand shot up and caught her wrist, stopping the blow a couple of inches short of his cheek. Evidently. Let go of me! You promise not to try to slap me again? Denny glared at him for a second. I promise. Good. Now, her knee shot up and slammed into his groin. Pain exploded through his body and doubled him over. I didn't promise not to do that, though. (sighs) Bryce stumbled over to a nearby hitch rail and leaned on it, grateful as hell that it was there. Otherwise, he'd have just crumpled up there in the street. He managed to lift his head and watched her walk away, stiffed back with fury. Damn. If that smoked Jensen's little girl, I sure don't want to mess with any other members of the Jensen family. 